Are you ready? <laughs> so nice. I'm Samuel Hamon from uh, Rouen University. And I'm Colin Laboulet, also from Rouen University, and uh, we represent today the National Institute for Teaching and Education of Rouen Normandy. And we would like that you experiment the simulation center now, here. It's a simulation of the simulation center. Yeah. So, inception. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, but before, uh, what, uh, what is it, yes. Colin? I'm glad uh, you asked. <laughs> so, basically, a simulation center, it's at our school, it's composed of two rooms. So, this room uh, is basically uh, I mean, it looks like a normal classroom, but smaller. And it's equipped on the technical side uh, by four cameras and also uh, recording and image processing software. And everybody that is acting has some microphones, so you can actually hear everything that's happening here, and you can see and hear from this place that is used for briefing and debriefing. So you can record also the session and press pause on the key moments of the simulation, so you can review it as a training part. So here, is your, so these two rooms are separated by a corridor, and uh, you can you can uh, use this room for briefing and debriefing. We will soon do this. So actually, it comes from health. Um, in Rouen, we are quite advanced uh, in the simulation health section. So we have a reproduction of a pharmacy, but also a doctor's uh, room or examination room, because uh, for doctors it's really important to practice how to announce to patients that they have maybe some illness or some critical treatment uh, to take. And so, of course, practice the soft skills as well. Uh, it's not always about technical. So um, we also have this kind of situation in education, because sometimes we have to deal with uh, conflicts or also to announce uh, to some parents uh, that they keep have trouble learning or maybe have special needs that they didn't figure it out. Or also we use it for preparation for the examination as uh, teachers and um, to also practice our special needs uh, uh, ability to, I mean, our special needs practice. <laughs> so. so now an uh, illustration, yes. video illustration. On va mettre posé en plein écran. d'utiliser la salle de simulation parce que je trouve que c'est un moyen de mettre les élèves, les étudiants en pratique et de simuler des situations qu'ils vont rencontrer en classe. On voit beaucoup de cours théoriques, mais c'est vrai que là, on peut vraiment euh, mettre en place ben, ce qu'on voit. On peut proposer des activités et avoir un retour sur notre pratique, notre manière de faire. Ça nous permet aussi à chaque fois d'avoir des pistes d'amélioration, puisque tout le monde a un point de vue différent sur chaque activité. Ce que j'aime beaucoup avec la salle de simulation, c'est qu'on peut voir ce que les autres font, ce que nos camarades proposent en cours. Et on voit les différentes activités, des activités auxquelles on n'a pas forcément pensé. Ça nous permet vraiment d'avoir un, un feedback, d'avoir un retour sur euh, ce qu'on a fait, sur euh, ce que ça s'est bien déroulé et, et de revoir après les extraits. On peut avoir un recul sur notre pratique et sur euh, notre façon d'enseigner. Ça permet aux étudiants de regarder les uns et les autres et d'apprendre euh par leur père, et ça c'est très très intéressant. Il permet de justement expérimenter les façons d'enseigner qu'on peut avoir à l'INSP et dans, une, dans un univers contrôlé, ce qui fait que contrairement à l'univers de la classe où par exemple en stage je suis confrontée à des classes seule et c'est plus agréable d'avoir testé avant dans la salle, de se rendre compte de comment ça peut évoluer, les élèves comment ils peuvent réagir ou si les gens comprennent tout simplement. Et du coup, ça permet voilà, d'avoir une phase de test avant de se lancer devant les élèves pour de vrai. 
Et donc c'est ça qui fait que c'est très important et très utile pour moi, la salle de simulation. Les premiers cours de l'année ont eu lieu dans la salle de simulation, ce qui fait qu'en fin d'année, ils sont très à l'aise et le dispositif ne fait plus peur. Euh, je n'aime pas euh, particulièrement être filmée, je n'étais pas très à l'aise face à cette idée. Je ne savais pas non plus ce qu'elle allait devenir de cette vidéo de moi euh, en train d'essayer d'enseigner pour la première fois. Donc euh, bah, j'ai eu peur. Et euh, bah, finalement, en fait, il y a une bonne ambiance puisque c'est ce qui rassure parce qu'en fait, on est tous là pour apprendre et euh, c'est très bienveillant. C'est un dispositif très positif. Je pense que les étudiants, ils ont peut-être l'appréhension. En même temps, on fait un métier où on doit se mettre devant un groupe tous les jours. Donc, se confronter à, à son image est, est important. So now you can see more clearly what it looks like, but uh, you not experienced it yet. To begin, we, we wanted to start with a, an icebreaker, like uh, sweet and sour. But uh, now we have been together for several days. It's okay. So we have decided to ask you a question. What indicators for you could you suggest for observing a teacher introducing his, himself to his pupils for the first time? So we can take a uh, three minutes to exchange, to share, and after you can write on the board here two words, indicators to observe the teacher. So maybe you can pair by two or three, like maybe two of you. And, every, uh, and when you're ready, you just come here and write uh, the most important uh, thing. Did you get the question, the assignment? Uh, um, like uh, for you, what is the most important thing for like it's like just a thing, to like observe. a criterion? Yeah, yeah? Criterion. Uh, maybe it's not a good word. Sorry. Measuring, like if you're evaluating the teacher's skills. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. This. Yes. So, like you can give your interpretation actually. Okay. <laughs> uh, is it? Do we have? Uh, no, it's just like a, to have a pen, but there's here. Ah, sorry. <laughs> yes. Okay, so three minutes for that, and uh, or if you're ready before, you can come and write it on the board. Is it clear? Okay, one minute left.
authenticity and enthusiasm. Thanks so for the first group. Yeah, you can, maybe it's bigger. <laughs> Could you maybe uh, tell a bit more about why you trust this world? This world? So, yes. authenticity, was, um, authenticity is, I, I guess, with the generation of people that we teach, they can tell very quickly whether someone's faking it or not. Mm. You know, that was yeah. why we chose that word. And people are drawn towards authentic people. Yeah. So if you can convey that, then that's, that's better. And enthusiasm, I guess just the art of teaching requires it to some level, at least, you know? Yeah, that was basically the introduction of, uh, you know, remember yesterday? Yes. Uh, he said, like, uh, instructors cannot be replaced because of also this, uh, this, thing, yeah. <laughs> this uh, enthusiast and authenticity, like they are real human beings. Thank you very much. Forward facing. Uh, open friendly facial expression. Okay, so like the the nonverbal attitude, right? Yeah, create, a atmosphere. create a friendly atmosphere. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Eye contact. So it's like a, it's kind of the same thing. Acknowledge people. Uh, open body language. So all of this is like nonverbal communication. Uh, acknowledge people who wrote that, if someone wants to detail a bit more. Okay. Uh, well, to, um, uh, for example, to, to look everybody in the eye. Uh, for me, for one, if I'm nervous, I tend to focus on one person and, and, and uh, not seeing uh, the rest of the people, but yeah. And we had one example, maybe standing in door the first time and shake hands as a student coming mm -hmm. in. Yeah, so it's actually about being present uh, within the room with all the students that are here. Okay, thank you. Uh, and uh, communication, respect, attitude. So you saw that uh, you found actually lots of diverse examples. Do you have something to add? Yeah. I actually have a question regarding this because, of course, now we're uh, focusing uh, much more on... Uh, a digital uh, online learning uh, where and it's often also uh, it's uh, a, uh, how could I call it uh, it's it's not in the moment that you actually meet students so sometimes you just pre-record your parts yes. and then we, when we re look at those kind of things it's like okay yes you can convey those when you actually meet students but it's very hard to to do that when you're pre-recording your your lectures do you have any advice on those kind of things as well? Because I think that's that's how do you can can do those things when you are pre-recording your lectures? Uh, do you have any idea? Wait, yeah, actually, that's a, a really other question, but that's super interesting as well. I mean, for us, we are more focusing on like face to face because we are getting them used with their image. But uh, I guess also it's about creating space for asking questions or like creating like some discussion canal if you're online, like a chat or some uh, question you've already thought or, or proposing them to exchange together. But maybe some, maybe we can uh, explore it a bit uh, later as well. That's interesting. But now we experiment, just we are in the same place. But uh, okay, good question, thank you. Okay. So thanks for all these answers. So just to prepare yourself, we will need soon some voluntary to, as we say, simulate the simulation center. But uh, before that, um, we will uh, distribute a grid of observation. Um, yes, so soon we will need uh, three students, three fake students, and uh, one uh, simulated teacher, okay? But, what? <laughs> Yes, so Samuel is going to distribute a grid uh, for the observers that was actually co-built with the students. But before um, choosing some volunteers, I would like to, uh, to guide a few guidelines for the simulation to go well, that it's actually the guideline we use with the student. So confidentiality of the discussion, I mean, of course, today is filmed, so it's not really the case, but that's supposed to be. The freedom to act or not to act, like uh, please feel free also to say stuff. 
This is a fiction, so there will be some scenarios for the students that will have different roles, and this is not happening for real, so it's, remember this. There is, will be a specific duration of three minutes. Um, we will play the, the situation only one time, but usually it's more than that. And please show some respect for the actors and give silence during the presentation. Actually, I hear a big noise over there, but I hope it, <laughs> it will be okay. Yeah, maybe we can turn the AC off because it wasn't before, so... Okay, thanks for <laughs> taking care. Um, okay, so now, uh, is there please... Uh, so, four volunteers, please? We need your participation so <laughs> it goes uh, smoothly. So, to help. Okay, one participant? Please, we need three more. <laughs> it's kind of easy, like, really. Okay? Yeah, so, okay, so <laughs> we have two volunteers, we still need two. You will have some treats, thanks a lot for our sponsor. <laughs> we, have, we have candies. <laughs> okay, we need uh, two last volunteers. It can be anyone, actually, like, uh, also the organizer, it's okay, like. Okay, so a second student, and we need one, one last. <laughs> Who has the bravery? We create a safe environment for you to, <laughs> to play. Ah, thank you very much. Okay, so, um, so just uh, before you go, so uh, who would like to play the teacher in uh, the four of you? Just, uh, it's really easy task, like really, it's not uh, so, actually the first workshop we did on Monday was much more intimidating, so <laughs> don't worry. Okay. Ah, okay, but so now we have four, uh, uh, five, uh, Simulation, so. Yeah, we already had our volunteers, but uh, I was just asking be, be, uh, among the volunteers who would like to play the teacher? Just uh, pick randomly, maybe. You? <laughs> no? <laughs> you? You are okay to play the teacher? Yes? Okay, thank you. We can clap, we can clap, we can clap for the volunteer. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, so for the simulated teacher, everybody knows about this. So this is a briefing. Okay, like I leave you read it. Do you arrive to read? Maybe I can read it out loud. <laughs> okay, so you arrive in your classroom where the students are already settled. You greet your student and then you try to teach them a word of vocabulary. It can be really easy. So meaning or pronunciation. Students start in English and have different levels in English. Okay? Is it clear? Great. Okay, so I will ask the volunteer to go with uh, Samuel uh, over here, which is the simulated simulation center. <laughs> okay. Okay, and the scenarios of the student will be different, so. But you will be the observers and you don't know the scenarios, okay? Uh, no, so the teacher, you don't look, please. <laughs> yes, <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, so the observers, um, you have a grid that, uh, that you received. Can you please read it and so ask me a question if uh, something is not clear because you will have to complete it during the simulation. Yes, is there a question? Uh, you, there is no instruction on it, so just feel free to do what you want. Ah, yes, sorry, sorry, sorry. That everybody has the grid? Everybody has the grid? Okay. Okay, is, is everything clear? Or do you have a question within the grid? For the vocabulary or anything? It's clear? Any question? So you can take notes during the simulation. You will see. Uh, yeah, that's not so easy, but uh, you see it on the whiteboard what's happening, and you will hear them. Ah, yeah. I, I will give uh, you the microphone so we can.
I think from a teaching perspective, it would be good to uh, make do this badly and make loads of mistakes. So, um, you know, threshold concepts and so forth. Okay, hello everybody. How are you all? Very good. So uh, my name's Dave, and uh, what we're aiming to do today is we're going to look at uh, a word um, which is a very common and uh, important word uh, in my home country, which is Ireland. Um, and it is, uh, before, we, before we get into it, um, could I just ask uh, whereabouts are you guys based? What countries? Yes, hi, my name is uh, Mihaela. I uh, was born in Romania. I live in the United States. Okay. You prefer to travel? <laughs> I'm visiting my parents. <laughs> Killing two birds with one stone. That's an idiom. I shouldn't use that. Okay. Yeah? Uh, I'm, I'm Irish. So. Okay. I'm Marius. I'm from Romania. Okay, okay. And um, what I'd be really curious to find out about is when you are in a restaurant or the opera or in a bar and you're having lots of fun, okay, what would be the word that you use in your native country for that? Just for being there or just uh, having fun? We having fun. Cool. Hmm? It's cool. Cool. With the accent, cool. Cool. <laughs> Um, I, I don't know. I don't know? No, no, okay. Not sure what you're talking about. Okay, okay. Uh, we usually say uh, it's uh, destructive. Hmm? Destructive. Yes. This is the word. Destruct. Destructive. Destruct. Uh, it's fun. It's entertaining. Okay, okay. It sounds like destruction. <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, what I might ask you to do, so the, the word I'm going to be talking about is a word called crack, okay? And in Ireland, we have a word for fun, and it is crack. <laughs> and uh, this is a word that's very unique to Ireland, and it's, it's not... Uh, not known in, in many other places in the world. Um, but do you have any knowledge of crack? What, what do you think of when you think of crack? As a mechanical engineer, I would say that I can think of an experiment of, you know, destructive tests. Okay, okay. Crack. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of crack, Pia? Complicated term. No, I, I, I guess it. it um, uh, I don't know. It's not. That's something I think about. Okay. Okay. Uh, I don't think I'm allowed to say it on camera. Hmm? I don't think I'm allowed to say it on camera. On camera. <laughs> yeah. So I suppose. Oh. Okay. So I suppose yeah. Crack can mean many different things. It can have negative connotations. Uh, it can mean something like a, a, a structural problem with a with a property. And in Ireland, it means fun when you're out and you're having a time, good time in the restaurant with your friends. That is crack. So can I just check um, with you? Um, uh, what, what, if you gave an interpretation of it, crack in Ireland, what would you think it means? Um, if I go to Ireland and uh, I hear the word? Yes. Yeah. What are you going to think of now instead of a crack in a, in a piece of wood? I cannot say it like my colleague here. I cannot say it public. I cannot express that. I will have a very... Um, um, it will have a very strong impression on me, and mm. I'll definitely ask question for clarification. Okay. Okay. So we're going to cancel? Yeah. i sorry. That was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Uh -huh. 
thank you very much uh, for our volunteers and for our observers that were all actors of this process, actually. Yeah, David is a professional of fun. <laughs> thank you very much for playing along. Um, so we will uh, go through the process of the debriefing that we also use with our students. Okay, a bit uh, more short than usual, of course. So first, uh, the professional simulated teacher will give a little gift to himself, something he liked about his uh, performance. So could you, uh, I will maybe give him the microphone, or do you have another one? Ah, yes. So could you say something? Yeah, uh, I noticed that. Uh, I w wait, sorry, uh, it's just about the, the person himself that played the teacher, and then it will be the observers. Okay, I'm an observer. Oh, no. no, no, you I'm wear the, uh, no, so, sorry, but you will come just after. <laughs> Thanks. Well, something I did good, is it? Yes. Something. Everything. <laughs> Everything, okay. Maybe something a bit more specific that you like. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? But <laughs> uh, um, I felt maybe that I tried to see where they, what kind of, ta I'm not a language teacher, but kind of how they, what interpretation they had of the word uh -huh. um, before presenting and talking about the word. Okay, so like you made it kind of personalized, if yeah. I get this right. Okay, uh, maybe we can applause him a bit again. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, so for the observers or for the, the um, uh, student pupils, um, maybe if we can give three positive things. So you mm -hmm. had something to say. Yeah. Okay. So maybe you can give her the microphone, okay. thank you. The teacher starts uh, teaching, but first of all introduce himself. He introduce so this himself? Is, yeah, very yeah. important for the students to okay. know the name and some characteristics of the teacher. Also, uh, he tried to understand the diversity of the pupils because he asked uh, what their origin is, uh, where they yes. come from, what mm -hmm. country, and mm -hmm. this is also important. And I noticed also that his voice was calm and steadily during the teaching procedure, and that's the most important thing. Okay, so introducing himself, personalized, uh, I mean, curiosity, mm -hmm. and, and the voice. Uh, also, and also gesture. Soft voice. He used, he was okay. good language also. Really nice element. Yeah. Does someone has well anything <laughs> more to say? Something positive about his performance? Uh, he was really trying to interact with the students mm -hmm. uh, and also uh, he showed an interest by, by moving forward. It's like, okay, what do you say? I really want to understand what you're saying. So he really showed an interest in, in the student's perspective. Yeah, so curiosity and, in, and personal interest. Yes. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you very much. Of course, that maybe there will be a lot more to say, but we'll um, go on on the description and interpretation. So for the papils, uh, how did, or for the teacher actually, how did it felt for you during the simulation? Uh, how did it feel, is it? Yeah, how did you feel as a simulated teacher? Um, I felt, uh, I suppose, uh, insecure <laughs> in so far. It was uh, <laughs> a, a new thing and I had very little time to think about it. Um, uh, I knew P.O. was on his phone and I was kind of like, Oh, mm. let's just get through it. <laughs> let's get through the role play. Um, so maybe I, I wasn't brave uh, to challenge it. Um, so I suppose that was the feeling, a sense of um, a lack of braveness, if that's a word. Um, bravery. Ah, lack of bravery. You, you do have better English. Like maybe. insecurity, kind of. Okay. Yeah. And uh, did you notice uh, the, there were three different roles for the pupils? So, uh, did you notice which roles it, did they have? Yeah, well, Pio was uh, kind of disengaged, was just on his phone. Um, I think uh, the person on the right uh, was kind of, um, didn't want to, kind of was a bit abrasive, uh, kind of maybe not wanting to engage. Mm -hmm. And I thought the student on the left was quite cooperative and, uh, um, obviously, a differing level of engagement. She was kind of almost helping me out a small bit. Well, good. Well, you noticed really good. The, that was basically the, the scenario. So, so for the simulated uh, students, how did it uh, feel for you? So, wait, um, who was the student? Yes, for you. And also, there were um, someone else. I he left. Okay. <laughs> so maybe yeah, for you, how did it feel? Was it easy? How? 
It was very easy. Um, and my intention was to play a different role. And, um, but I fall into my preferred role, I guess. And uh, that's because I had a very good teacher to engage me into this conversation. Okay, nice. And, and uh, did any of you uh, saw some improvement? Uh, I mean, maybe as a teacher that you could have uh, done, like uh, to feel better in your performance, like if you would be a, like a regular teacher um, and this situation would happen, um, would there be anything you would improve? So I had to play the role of someone who was disinterested, but it was hard to be disinterested because of the positive approach that David took. So in my regard, it was actually challenging to pretend to be on the phone and looking around the room because actually it was very engaging. So to me, yeah. the positives were building on that interaction and the ease that was there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's not easy to show yourself uh, of directly. So yeah, yeah, I thought it was really good. Thank you very much. Um, so now the observers, um, do you want to complete uh, what they said or to propose some improvement that uh, you can use the grid? We usually we go point by point on the grid, but we won't have time today. But maybe you marked something down that could be notable. Like how could they improve? Maybe, I mean, we didn't see everything. That's why like usually we have four cameras and you only had one. So, um, but maybe you noted something down. Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, I noticed that uh, maybe because the uh, the situation or thing is uh, the area is very small, so it was like basically standing still. You didn't take over the whole uh, area uh, that you could have had or owned the own whole area. So in that simulation, you were basically standing still, leaning forward, uh, uh, discussing, but not like uh, uh, moving around. Maybe it was a tactical uh, choice that uh, you did it but uh, that's what I uh, wrote down here that uh, it was uh, uh, standing still in, in, in that teaching situation yeah thank you for your note first of all thank you very much it was very instructive but uh, w what was the reason to separate observers from the case because would it be like uh, also efficient to let people come in the room even though being silent like yeah, no, that's and really observe like by mm -hmm. scene because w what's the difference between viewing that from the screen rather than just viewing them from there yeah Thanks. actually you're a really good question because you're like a bit in advance in our presentation <laughs> we will actually explain why um, it's a uh, useful compared to normal classroom uh, role play, actually. So we will explain it just a bit before. I mean, it's basically about creating immersion and the fact that uh, you don't see the look of other people. Yeah, and that would be much more difficult to play that piece around. Ah, okay, so that's yeah, interesting. For, for yeah. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, we'll, we'll go a bit more about this uh, just a bit uh, later, but thanks for this question. Yeah, we can also like, uh, uh, since we re recorded the video of uh, the simulation, we can also press pause and go back on the moment. But uh, yeah, I saw that uh, Samuel noted that also we could not really use our hand because of the microphone. And uh, I mean, of course, it, uh, it's not the uh, ideal situation. And yeah, of course, the room was not so big. So you have a good point. Yeah, does anyone have something more to say that they noted down? <laughs> and the crack? <laughs> Why the crack? But that's interesting. <laughs> but it, it was it was really it was actually really engaging, and for the motivation, it was good. <laughs> so now, uh, what we just uh, experiment will have few impacts for on your professional practices. However, the interview with the student showed that long-time practice has much more impact on their professional practices. By the way, the simulation center has no real impact compared to a regular room, uh, classroom. Um, in a, the benefits of the use of the simulation center seems to be much more efficient when 
its use in the long time practice. It's the first research to verify conditions of for effectiveness. Yes. But we have uh, a lot of But it's the first research to the National Institute for Teaching and Education. We compare two two group. Okay. Yeah. So it, um, so actually, if it's just one time for use, you can actually do some role play in the room. There is not so much difference. But if you play it for a long time, there is some much more uh, benefits. So that's why. And um, so actually, to answer more. <laughs> to your question. Um, all of these points, it's from literature about the topic, but also the testimony of the student, of the teachers, because uh, with Samuel, we are really trying to promote this dispositive to give some tools for teachers to, to write some scenarios with the students. So they are really co-creating the, the scenarios. And we also observed um, what's the main point. So what we realize it's uh, the immersion sense. Um, what they, she said in the one of the girls said in the video that it's like a controlled area. So you know you are actually kind of safe and you're a bit among four walls. So it's really not the same than if you're doing it in front of the whole class. Um, and the fact that it's a separate room, like you actually go inside and there is a process in your mind actually of, of this. And there is a decor, I mean, easy decor, because like normal room is not like crazy decor, but <laughs> um, also the uh, emergency action and decision making, because uh, we are working with human beings. So as you know, like you can never know what's going to happen. So you'll have to improvise and adapt. To s we talked about adaptation just before. Um, so you will use theatrical improvisation, like how do you deal with change, with uh, the things that you haven't planned? So that's really good exercise for this. Um, and about observing yourself and others, we also worked these last days about uh, peers' um, feedback, and we can see how pow powerful it is. So um, we also want to equip future teachers with the tools that they need, so self-observation. Sometimes you, you heard something for ages, and then you see yourself doing it, and you're like, ah, that's what they meant. And it can change directly for, like, and it's much more powerful to see yourself on a video, which actually is not easy as well to be comfortable with your image. Um, the two last points is about staging yourself. Like, uh, as the teacher said, you have to be in front of a class every day. So you need to be comfortable with your body, with your image. And um, yeah, you, of course, it's about sometimes improvisation skills and about how you see your image. So, so that actually helps. Uh, I know that in medicine, by example, uh, they they capture the video of simulation and uh, and then they have to they use it for training the teachers and they can analyze and they do some homework on what they could have improved. So that's really interesting as a training uh, tool, actually. <coughs> and uh, finally, um, motivation through innovation. So at first, the students are quite curious about the dispositive. It can be scary, as uh, some uh, students said. But uh, the fact that they also design the scenarios, like especially about inclusive situation, um, they feel part of it uh, and they feel actor of uh, this dispositive. I don't know. Uh, don't hesitate if you have any question about all of this. No. Yeah. So are most of the simulations really, like you might have a teacher who's going to go into a class of forty pupils, and then. They're the scenarios, they're usually maybe with three or four only, maybe. Is oh, it? Sometimes it's more like uh, the, this video that you saw, I think we were like eight or ten, yeah. but the room is not so big, and that's actually what Samuel is going to say. We would like a larger room because to, to reproduce real uh, life situation of teacher, like they don't, they, it's really rare that they have eight students, so <laughs> that's a good question. I also have a question. Uh, the students are talking about, uh, are we talking about the age of 18 to 25? Uh, because, of course, there's also a lot of teachers that stand in, in front of class for younger children. Uh, but then I also immediately start to think about uh, the ramifications when you, you record things and uh, privacy aspects to it. So yes. there was a girl in the beginning, she also like, okay, I don't know what's going to happen with the data. How do you deal with those kind of things? Yes, 
Um, so I'll try to answer and you completely. Uh, there is, a, every time a student arrive, I mean, if it's their first time, there is directly like a QR code where they have to accept or not uh, for, for their right of image. And uh, I'm, I'm not so sure because it's mostly the audiovisual part that, that deals with it, but uh, uh, it's supposed to be for like one year or two. And then the video of the teaching is only accessible by the teacher that brought their student. So uh, like there is a software that they use during the simulation and it goes directly in their files. So the other teachers don't have access on this. And uh, yeah, it's, it's one year or two years? Uh, yeah, two years. So it's only accessible for two years and then it, uh, it disappears or they have to delete it or something like that. And, and for your pr previous question about the youngest t t um, student, we actually have a replica of a garden uh, kindergarten room, but it's not equipped with cameras yet. Maybe you want to talk about it. <coughs> but I, um, but uh, we want also to bring the, some kid inside, but also, yeah, of course, with the privacy, it, uh, that's, uh, yeah, and sometimes it can be simulated. So like uh, some uh, older uh, like student that play the kids, but it can also be like, uh, some future teachers that bring their class into this room because it's much bigger, so it could be like that. Like we can actually hi hire some actors to play uh, some some students, so it can be quite broad. Ah, okay. <laughs> Another question. Okay, nice. <laughs> Are you finding other uh, faculties apart from the education people want to use your facilities and stuff like that and? What are yeah. some of the other uh, things that have been used for within this room? Or is it all just teaching? Um, so uh, as I said, uh, at first it really comes from health. Like uh, in, in uh, Rouen, like, uh, there is a big simulation and we really got inspired from them. And actually in France, it will be in the national uh, um, uh, doctor's exam, like to have simulation patients and to be evaluated also on their soft skills. So that's huge. And actually lots of faculty of medicine are not prepared for this. In Rouen, we are using it for lots of years, but lots of them are not doing it and they suddenly have to do it for national exams. So, but for our uh, simulation room, uh, I think it's, uh, you can use it in the whole uh, faculty. But uh, I mean, we are already trying to bring the teachers because it, it's for it's like a classroom. So, you know, it, it's more meant uh, for teaching than for being a chemist, chemistry or. And you can you have to be trained before going there because it's quite sensitive material and it costs a lot. So, of course, it's for the trained staff, which we are also training. <laughs> so, does it answer your questions? Yes, great. Maybe. No. So we are um, creating new scenario with student and professional for pupils with special need now actually. Um, and for the outlook uh, in terms of research, uh, we want to check, verify uh, our hypothesis about the benefits and condition for effectiveness. Uh, and for the future, we would like to have two um, two new larger rooms. Uh, one for preschool and one for secondary school. But just, uh, it's it's the first in France, actually. I mean, if, as a as a you know, like where we are working, the Institute for Teaching and Education. There are several in France, but this simulation center for teaching, it's the first in France. So that's why it's kind of innovating. I mean, simulation is not uh, brand new. You know, like we've been using it for a long time. But for teaching, yeah, it's it's new. Ah, there is a question. Uh, and there is 10, great, thanks. It's okay, we are almost finished. Yeah, thank you. Uh, one thing that came to my mind on on this, your product or service, how do you want to call it, is that uh, most of the companies that are selling something, that they're salespeople, and they have simulations on uh, how to sell to the different customers. Mm -hmm. So I would recommend for you, in order to gain that 120,000 euros for for your new investments is to uh, create a uh, merchandise this uh, product in a way that you offer it to companies in your region that they can practice their sales presentation uh, in your setting. So in that case, uh, you can ask money for, for this product that you have. So not just focus on teacher uh, uh, learning how to behave in front of the audience because all the salespeople need practice 
how to perform in front of their clients. So this kind of simulation, what you have, could actually be beneficial even in the region uh, of your university partners, etc. So go for the money. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thank you for the recommendation. Um, so yeah, this is all uh, for biography. I mean, it's mostly in French, so I don't know if you're familiar with French. Um, but I mean, we are not searchers. Like I'm an instructional uh, designer, and Samuel is a, a um, sport uh, teacher, uh, health education <laughs> sport teacher. So, but we are <coughs> actually taking in account the research and trying to really make a protocol and uh, and uh, so we are really trying to structurate this center, equip. Uh, with making tools and making it quite clear and structured so you can actually duplicate it in other university and because we really think it's a powerful tool so so yeah like thanks for your attention and if you have any um, ideas of or question or I mean, uh, improvement uh, feel free to say it right now we still have a bit of time to exchange so <laughs> so yes thank you very much <laughs>